Okay, so this video is about the second derivative as a function. So here we're going to uh, always have in the back of our mind a function f that we're given. And from this function, we said that we can create other functions. Like in the very beginning, we did composition of function. We took this function and stretched it and translated it and things like that. But the most recent um, way that we created a new function from this function was to create the derivative function. So we said that we can uh, create uh, the derivative. Given f, I can create the derivative function f prime, where the input is x. The rule is I take the derivative at x. And so the output is this f prime of x. OK, so it's the derivative at x. And so this um, was uh, a way to take our function and create a new function, which we call the derivative function. OK, so now we have this derivative function. We can, um, we can work with it like we do any other function, right? So we can ask about its uh, domain. We talked about that. When is, a, when is the? When is x in the domain of the derivative? It's when this limit makes sense, when the, when the slope of the original function is well-defined. But we can also do other things with it. In particular, we can do calculus on, on this function. So we can ask about limits of this function. We can ask about continuity of this function. And in particular, we could take a derivative of this function. Right? Anytime we have a function in the back of our mind, f of x, we can take its derivative. And so if the function in the back of our mind is f prime of x, we can take its derivative, right? So that's um, what I'll do is we'll go one more level and we'll take the second derivative f double prime of x. And how am I going to define this? I'm going to take my input x and the rule that defines this function is going to be I'm going to take the derivative of f prime of x. So this, the rule is going to be that I take the limit as h goes to zero of f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x over h. And if this limit exists, then I call this value f double prime of x. So I'm taking the derivative of f prime of x. And this limit might not always make sense, but when it does, then this value is well defined. Um, one thing I'll note is that it is uh, useful to have a formula for f prime of x if you're going to compute a limit like this, right? Like you, if you don't have a formula for f prime of x, then this is a limit of limits. You'd have to write this f prime as a limit itself involving f. And so that's going to get very complicated to evaluate. And so this um, is going to be easiest to work with if we are able to figure out a formula for f prime of x. The last thing I'll note is that we could keep doing this, right? I could take the derivative of f double prime. So now this is a function itself, and I can ask about its domain, its range, its continuity, its limits, and I could ask about its derivative. Uh, this, if I took the derivative of f double prime, we would call this the third derivative. In general, I can take as many derivatives as I want, and um, if I take n derivatives, we call this the nth derivative the nth derivative of f. So if I were to take the derivative n times, I call it the nth derivative of, the x, of f of x, and I'll denote this by uh, f and then n of x, f to the n of x. Um, when we do first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, we often write uh, one dash mark here, two dash marks here, three dash marks here. Of course, if I'm taking, say, 10 derivatives, uh, I don't want to write 10 apostrophes up here, so then we, we start using this notation instead. But um, most of the time, we'll work with the first or second derivative, and then we'll use, we'll use this notation. OK, so we're just sort of abstracting again. Like What this is saying is that I can take any number of derivatives I want, because since the first derivative itself is a function, I can do the same thing I do to any other function. I can understand its derivatives. Uh, and in this way, I can do this sort of as many times as I want. So we'll talk later about how are all of these functions related to each other. We already talked a little bit about how is f prime related to f. And now you can ask the same question, how is f double prime related to f prime? And in turn, how is this related to f? So that's next.